Welcome to this video lesson which is uh, going to introduce you to strategies to success in engineering study. So um, <clears throat> I'll begin um, uh, with explaining to you some of the keys uh, to success in engineering study from the perspective of a college student. The first thing to understand is how do you define success? Without understanding the definition of success, it's going to be difficult to achieve it. So um, you may take a moment here, pause, and you think about what you think about uh, success in your own mind, and, and then come back and uh, see how we define it. Well, it turns out that uh, in order to be successful, uh, you should have planned to achieve something. And, and so it's the achievement of uh, something that you desired, you had planned, or you had attempted, that will um, that will uh, uh, define success. It turns out that um, educators have uh, come across a very interesting, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, interesting uh, statistics on why some st students succeed while others fail. And surprisingly enough, uh, you'll find that it is not only about preparation. So uh, there have been many cases in which uh, poorly prepared students have gone on to be very successful, while well-prepared students have uh, actually not succeeded. And so uh, the, the, the learning here is that preparation is important, but success actually requires going beyond it. And so I'm going to lay out now four steps for you. Uh, that uh, that will help you define how to succeed. If you get a chance, please do uh, get a copy of this book. You can pick it up at a second-hand book, uh, book sale um, or borrow it from your library and, and go through it. It has some good strategies on how to be effective uh, as, a, as a college student as well as uh, beyond that. Okay, so step number one in success is to set your goals. So the question uh, I might ask you is, okay, what type of engineering do you want to do? So with our introduction to, to engineering from chapter two that we laid out first, you know, you might choose to be a biomedical engineer, a chemical engineer, materials engineer, uh, a mechanical engineer, electrical engineer, and so on and so forth. And and so um, if, you have, uh, if you have figured this out, that's great. If not, you should write down, you know, what options you are considering. More importantly, you should write down what your goals are. Because once you write them down, uh, it's actually quite powerful because you can always come back to it on, on, on a day where you are, you know, maybe you are, uh, are discouraged or unhappy or, you know, think that you're on the wrong track. You can come back and say, oh, yeah, you know what? I have written down my goals here. This is what I want to do. And there was a very good reason I wrote it down because I thought through it. I, you know, I, I made, uh, um, I, 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 I talked to a lot of people, and and whatever reason it is, you know, it's my passion. For whatever reason, you wrote down this as a goal, and so now that goal is going to give you some direction. So it's important for you to write that down. The second thing is, you know, you need to once you write it down, you have to commit to achieving it, right? Uh, so writing down is one part of it. But that's not enough. Now that you've written it down, now you know everything you do should be towards uh, achieving your goals. So it turns out that achieving your goals is related to three factors. The first is you know whether you have some uh, initial natural uh, interest or, or talent or um, uh, uh, you know uh, proclivity to perform some activity. For example, maybe. Maybe you're good at uh, at figuring out how to uh, put um, electrical circuits together. So you have, you know, maybe an interest and a natural inclination to make electrical circuits. Okay, so that's that's called talent, right? The second is something called effort, which is the actual amount of time you spend on developing your ability to make uh, your circuits. For example, uh, if your talent is to is to do uh, computational programming, um, then the effort is the amount of time you actually spend uh, developing your talent. And finally, it's the skill. So the skill is is the outcome of your effort and talent. It's really what you can do. 
uh, as a combination of your talent and effort. So in other words, uh, there is a very interesting way to remember this and it turns out that skill is the product of your talent times your effort. Right? And finally your achievement is really your skill times your effort. So just having skill is not enough because uh, if you have skill you still need to go out and put the effort in to be able to complete a certain task. And so achievement is skill times effort and now if I uh, if I look at this equation here and I take what I found in equation 1 and put it back into equation 2 I see that my achievement is going to be uh, talent multiplied by the square of effort. right? So that's what I find here now. So you see that um, you're achieving something is going to require effort and talent. The good news is this. Everybody has talent. Okay? So don't believe uh, anything otherwise. Everybody has talent. It's really effort that makes the difference. Okay? So, um, so you uh, think about this. If you want to achieve something, uh, you take your talent, which is never zero, and put in as much effort as you can, and that's when uh, you will achieve your goal. Number three, uh, and that is uh, related to developing a proper mindset. So what is mindset? Well, mindset is, 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 is your mind and what you think uh, you can or cannot do. And is that something that is set in stone or is that something that you can change? Well, in the case of somebody who has a fixed mindset, the belief here is that one thinks that their qualities are basically set in stone. They have been born with it and they can't do anything to change it. Okay? So, for example, maybe what you think about as your intelligence, your personality, your moral character, uh, you think that these are all set in stone. And what that leads to is that it leads to a tendency for uh, you, you to prove these uh, characteristics over and over again. Okay. On the other hand, somebody who has a growth mindset uh, uh, believes that any of these things can be changed through effort. Whether it's your intelligence, your personality, your character, all of these things can be changed uh, by effort. And what that leads to is a natural tendency for you to constantly grow and improve. And, and so it's important for you to, uh, you know, think about this. If you get a chance, you can read through this book by Carol Dweck on Mindset, The New Psychology of Success. And, uh, and it's important to be able to uh, uh, go past the fixed mindset and try to introduce as many aspects of the growth mindset as you can. Um, so number four, and this has to do with attitude. So attitude is a little bit different from mindset. So let's let's think about you know attitude in the context of an analogy here. We compare our brain to a computer, right? So remember that in a computer, you know you uh, store memory and you perform you know uh, functions by typing something on the keyboard or touching something on the screen, uh, and the computer uh, uh, listens to your command or uh, accepts your command and performs some activity. Now suppose you know you start putting a lot of information on a computer that is not needed. You know maybe big files uh, that contain irrelevant information. So over time your computer is going to slow down. And now when you try to do something useful, you find that it's taking a lot more time to do it. Why is that? Because your computer now is filled with useless information that you don't need, and that is now slowing down what you actually want to do. So a positive mindset is something like that. You know, if you if you have uh, used a part of your brain memory to store a negative uh, mindset or a negative attitude, for example, if you keep saying and storing in your brain that I can't do something, I can't do something, I can't do something, then uh, you have used up a certain memory in your brain that is not available to do you anything useful. And so, what you should do is you replace that negative uh, negative uh, memory in your brain with a positive memory instead of saying I can't do it you say yes I can do it and if I can't do it I'm going to learn how to do it so this is what it means to have a positive attitude versus a negative attitude don't use your brain cells uh, especially the memory in your brain to store negative type of information keep it as positive as possible 
okay so with that I wrap up part one of this uh, uh, this chapter keys to success in engineering study please make sure to uh, read any supporting um, slides uh, of course read through chapter one of the textbook from where we have this content and uh, look for activities that need to be completed thank you